Hi everyone, I'm Laura. I'm going to show you how to crochet these hot air balloons. If you'd like the written pattern, it's on my website. I'll leave a link in the description. If you've never crocheted before, take a look at my videos about how to do single crochet and how to crochet in the round. So both of these are made using the same pattern and they both keep the yarns attached all the time when you're changing colour. But the one on the right is made by working the other colour into the back of your stitches so that it's always in the right place when you need to change colour. And the one on the left is made by not working it in, but carrying it across to the point that you need it to be from the inside. So when you work the yarn into the back of the stitches, the downside is that it makes the red show through. And if you carry it over, there won't be any red visible. Now the downside to carrying it over is that you have to be careful not to pull it too tight or it'll pull the piece out of shape. It also makes the balloon a slightly different shape and slightly smaller and this is because when you work the yarn in it makes, you, it makes the stitches thicker. So I'm going to show you how to work the yarn in the back of the stitches and then for the rest of the video I'm going to make it by using the carrying over method and you can choose which method you prefer. So you're going to need double knit yarn in beige, white and red and you'll need a three millimeter crochet hook, some scissors, a stitch marker, and a yarn needle. And you'll also need some invisible thread. So I use this stuff, which is used for making jewelry, so it's stretchy, um, but you can just use ordinary invisible thread if you like. So for round one, we're going to start in white and we're going to make a magic ring. And we're going to make six single crochet in the magic ring, but we're going to change color after every stitch. So we're going to alternate between red and white. And the way we change color is we do it as we finish the stitch. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So we just take that short piece out and put it by the side. And then we go underneath both of those strands. So we begin making our single crochet. We have two loops on the hook. And now instead of yarning over and finishing that, we're going to put the white down and we're going to pull through a loop of red through both of those loops on the hook. So we've now finished that single crochet and we've changed to red. So the next single crochet will be in red. So this is a bit fiddly because there's a lot of strands, but we're going to go underneath all of the white pieces, all of the white strands. And then we're going to yarn over and pull through. Now we have two loops on the hook and we're going to put the red down and the white is still attached so we're going to pick up that white from behind and we're going to yarn over and pull through those two loops on the hook. So now that second single crochet is in red and we change to white. So we're just going to continue like this until we have six single crochet. So we're going underneath all of those. We're going underneath the magic ring, the white tail and the red.
Okay, so you count the Vs to count your stitches. So we've got six. And then we pull on that short white tail to close the magic ring. And then we can also pull on that red tail just to tighten that single crochet. And now we can put our stitch marker in. So round two, we're going to increase in every stitch. So an increase is two single crochet in one stitch. And we're going to change color as we finish the second single crochet of every increase stitch. So I'll show you how to do that. So I'm also going to show you for this round how to work the other color into the back of the stitches. So we're working in white. And we're going to take that red and place it on top of our hook. And then we yarn over in the white, hold on to that red and pull underneath it. And then we yarn over and pull through. So that's our first white single crochet. And you can see that that red is just being caught in the back of our stitches. So then we're going to make the second single crochet for the increase in the same stitch. So we yarn over and pull through. But we don't finish that in white. We pick up the red and we yarn over and pull through both loops on the hook. So now we've done our first increase in white and we've changed to red. And you can pull on that white just to tighten that single crochet. And then we're now working in red. So we carry it. So we take that white strand and put it over our hook and we work that into the back of our stitches. So this makes sure that it's always in the right place whenever we need to change color. And then for the second single crochet of the increase, we can pull that over and pull the white through. Now when you're working with two yarns at the same time and switching between them, they can get tangled and twisted. And then that makes it harder to work with and it also makes the yarn a bit thinner. So to avoid that happening, what I did was I had one yarn on either side of me. So I kept them separate and then I tried not to cross them over each other too much. So when I would put them down to change, when I would put them down after I'd changed color, I just tried to keep them both to their own sides. So now I'm going to show you the carry over method and I'm going to use this for the rest of the video. So you can see that I'm doing my increase stitches and I'm changing color in the same way, but I'm not working the other color into the back of my stitches. So I'm just carrying it over and pulling through in the same way. So for the moment, because we don't have very many stitches, it doesn't have to go that far. But as we increase, it's going to have to carry over a bigger distance. So we're going to have to make sure that we don't pull too tight. Otherwise, it pulls the crochet out of shape. So now we take the white and carry that over and pull through both red loops. So we're going to have 12 single crochet at the end of this round and each increase will be, we'll have two stitches of each color. So we have an increase in white, an increase in red and so on. And as we go through the increasing rounds, it's going to be exactly the same on every round. So we're only go, so we're only going to change color as we finish the second single crochet of every increase stitch.
So you can hold on to that white bit at the back and then pull the red through. So now we come to our last stitch. So we take the marker out and we do our last increase. So again, we're going to change to white as we finish this second single crochet of the increase. So you can see that we've got these strands where we've carried over on the back. And you can just pull tight on the magic ring tail if it's come a bit loose at this point. So we put our stitch marker back in. So round three, we're going to single crochet in the next stitch and then increase in the next stitch six times for a total of 18 stitches at the end of the round. And uh, we're working in white, so we're just going to change color in line with the previous sections. So we do our first single crochet in white and then we do our increase in white. And again, we change to red by carrying that over or working it in whichever method you're using. And we change on that, and we change as we finish that second single crochet of the increase. So now we're making each section of each color wider every time. So now it's the same with red. We do our first single crochet and then we do our increase. So we're going to be increasing in multiples of six. So I'll show you this round and the next round and then I'll leave the instructions on the screen and you can work your way through for the increases and then I'll meet you back. So you can count your stitches and you can see that we have three single crochet of each color because that's the single crochet and then the increase. So then the last section, we do our single crochet, take the marker out and then do our increase. And at the end of every round, we still need to change color. So when you're carrying it over, just remember to try and keep it nice and loose and not too taut with the bit that you carry over. So we put the marker back in. And then round four, we're going to single crochet in the next two stitches and then increase in the next stitch. And we're going to do that six times and we're going to be changing color in the same way as before. So we do our single crochet in the next two stitches in white 
and then our increase in white. And then we have four stitches of each color on this round. So I'll just show you to the end of this round so that you can see. And you can see on the back all of our lines where we've carried over each time. So we take the marker out and we do our last increase and we change colour again as we finish it. So I've left the instructions on the screen for rounds five to eight. So we're just increasing all the way up to 48 stitches and changing color in exactly the same way. So I will leave the instructions and I'll meet you back. So I've done all of those rounds. We can count our rounds like that. And you can see on the back, you get this quite cool effect when you carry over. So rounds nine to 14, that's six rounds. We get a single crochet in every stitch. So we're not 
increasing or decreasing, we're just maintaining 48 stitches. And we're going to change colour in line with every previous round. And then as we're finishing that last single crochet in white, we carry over the red or we work it in the back of our stitches. And we change to red. So for all of these six rounds, there's going to be eight single crochet in each section. So eight single crochet in the white and then eight in the red. So then we do our eight single crochet in red and we change as we finish that last stitch, we change to white. So I'll just show you the first round. And then you can pause the video and work your way through those through the remaining rounds and I'll meet you back at the end of round 14. So we take out the marker, do our last stitch in red and change to white. And you can reshape it and stretch it out with your fingers to just make sure it hasn't been pulled out of shape if any of the strands are a bit tight. So now if we take a look at the other one that I've done, these are our six rounds and this is where we start decreasing. So I've just done those six rounds. You can count them so you can, you can find the last increase and then count all the rounds after that. Now for round 15, we're going to single crochet in the next 14 stitches and then we're going to do an invisible decrease. I'm going to do that three times so that we have 45 stitches. So I'm going to show you how to do the invisible decrease. So first of all, we'll do our 14 single crochet. And for that, we're still going to be changing colour in line where we need to. So this first section is eight white single crochet. So we'll do our six single crochet in red. So the decreases of every round are always going to fall on the last two red stitches. And the red sections are the parts that are going to decrease and the white section are going to remain having eight stitches. So we can count our stitches, make sure we've got 14 and then we have two red stitches remaining. So to do an invisible decrease, we pick up the front loop. So this is the front loop and this is the back loop. So the front loop is closest to us. 
So we point our hook down and we pick up that front loop and then point it down again and we pick up the front loop of the next single crochet. Now we have three loops on our hook and then we yarn over and pull through two loops. So you can pull through one and then the second if it makes it a bit easier. And then instead of yarning over and pulling through in red, we now need to change to white in line with the next section. So we change to white by pulling that through both of the loops on the hook, same way as you would finish a normal single crochet. And then you can pull on that red end to tighten your invisible decrease. So you can see that the invisible decrease leaves a bit of a, it leaves a diagonal line. So we want to make sure we don't go into that and we go under the V for the next white stitch. So now we just do that again. We do 14 single crochet and then invisible decrease. So eight white single crochet, six red single crochet, and then the last two are the invisible decrease. So I'll show you the rest of this round. So invisible decreases are actually not completely invisible. There is a slight difference and that helps you to identify them. So you can see that it's got a bit of a difference at the base of it there compared to the single crochet. And also if you look from the inside, you'll be able to see the remaining back loops. So when you can identify the invisible decrease, then you can count your single crochet so you can make sure you've got the right number in between the decreases. So now we do our invisible decrease again. So point the hook down, pick up the first front loop, pick up the second front loop, yarn over and pull through those two loops. And then we put the red down and then we pull the white, wrap the white around the hook, yarn over and pull through those two red loops. Now we just have one more set of this to do. So we take the marker out when we've got two stitches remaining to do our last invisible decrease.
and then we change to white as we finish it. And then we put our marker back in. So I've put the instructions on the screen for round 16 to round 24. So you can pause the video and I'll meet you back at the end of round 24. So I have done all of those rounds now. And you can see the inside of the work with all of those lines crossing over. So for this last stitch, I'm not going to change to white because we're finished now. So I'm going to do the last stitch in red and I'm going to do a slip stitch instead of a single crochet. And this is just to round it off so that it's more like a slope rather than a step. So we yarn over and pull through and we pull that loop through the loop on the hook and that's a slip stitch. And then we cut both of those yarns, leaving enough tail to weave in those ends. And we fasten off. Then I'm going to thread the white tail onto my needle. I'm going to find a loop on the inside of those stitches. I'm going to pull through, but not all the way. And then I'm going to go through that loop from the from behind. I'm going to pull tight to make a knot around the stitch and then I'm going to weave through those loops from the back of those single crochet stitches to weave in the end. And then cut the yarn close to the work and then you can do the same with the red end. So I'm going to go through those white loops, pull through, and then trim the yarn close to the work. So now we're going to make the basket in beige and we're going to be working in rows. So we make a slip knot. and put our hook in it then we're going to work in the second stitch from the hook and we're going to single crochet in the next six stitches. Then we're going to chain one and turn and that doesn't count as a stitch it's just our turning chain and we're going to work in that stitch there so we're looking at the back of the previous row and we're going to single crochet in the next six stitches so this is row two and we're going to do this for two more rows after this So that last stitch can be a bit more fiddly to get into. Then we chain one and turn and six single crochet.
So you can count your rows, there's one, two, three, and four. Now we're gonna work in rounds. And we're gonna do that by working in the spaces at the ends of the rows. So we're gonna do a single crochet in that same space that we did the last single crochet. So a bit like an increase. And then you see that space next to it, we're gonna go into that and we're gonna do one single crochet. And then the next space, we're gonna do another single crochet. Now we've come to the bottom edge, so we're gonna use those remaining loops from the foundation chain, and we're gonna go through both parts of it. So single crochet in the next six of those. So that was one. Two. Three, four, five, and then that last space near the slip knot, six. Now we work up the other side and we're going to work in the next three spaces. So single crochet in that space. There's one. Two. And three. Now we're at the top edge again. So we're going to work as normal underneath both of those stitches, underneath both of those loops. And we're going to single crochet in the next six stitches. And we should have 18 stitches at the end of this round. So you can count just to make sure. So now we're going to put our stitch marker back in that last stitch that we did. Now for round two, we're going to work in the back loops only. So that's the loops that are furthest away from you. So this one, and we're going to single crochet in every stitch in the back loop only. And what this does is it makes the crochet change direction. So we have the flat base of the basket and now we're building our sides. So we take the marker out, do our last single crochet in the back loop only.
and you can push that inwards to make it a bit flatter. Then we put our marker back in. Now for rounds three to four, that's two rounds, we're going to single crochet in every stitch. So we're back to working in both loops now. And we're going to have 18 stitches. And we take the marker out, do our last single crochet, and that's one round. Take the marker out, do our last single crochet, and that's our second round completed. Now I'm going to do a slip stitch in the next stitch, and that's just to make it more like a slope rather than a step. And you can push that tail from the magic ring inside. And I'm going to leave quite a long tail now, so about that long. I'm going to fasten off. I'm going to thread that tail onto our needle. And you can see from the other one I've done, I've done four strands which hold the basket onto the balloon. So we're going to go in through the front loop only of that last white stitch. Any section will be okay. And then we go back through that same loop to fasten off around it. So we don't pull through all the way. We go through the back of that loop and pull tight. Now we've made a knot around it. Then we're going to cross over to the last white stitch on the other side. And then we're going to go, we're going to count four stitches on the beige. I'm going to go through 
the loop on that fourth stitch, trying to pull them down to make sure that all these strands are the same length. And we fasten off on that. Then we're going to weave through the stitches on the last round of the basket. I'm going to weave through to the other end. Then we're going to go through the middle stitch of another white section. And fasten off on the basket again. So now we've got our four strands and we're going to weave that into the back of the stitches on the last round. And then trim the yarn close to the work. So now we're going to take our invisible thread or our clear stretchy plastic thread, which is what I've used. I'm going to cut about 38 centimeters. And we'll thread that onto our needle. Then we're going to find a loop from round one on the top and we'll pull through but not all the way, leave a short end, a couple of inches and tie a knot. If you're using the stretchy stuff like me you have to pull quite tight to make sure that it doesn't start moving again and unraveling. So I've done a double knot around that. Then I'm going to find a stitch still on round one on the opposite side. And this is where you can decide how long you want it to be. So I've made my loop about five, four or five inches long. So now we're just going to make a knot around that loop as well. So we go back through the opposite direction and we go through the back of that loop and pull tight to make a knot around it. Now we're going to weave those short bits in. And you can grab them from the inside and pull them through. So now we've finished our hot air balloon. So you can use this as a hanging decoration, hang it on whatever you'd like to. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you'd like to send me a photo of your hot air balloon, I'd love to see it. You can tag me on Instagram at laura underscore wilson zero one. If you'd like to check out my Etsy shop, I design and sell crochet patterns. I'll leave the link in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.